Hello, everybody. Um, this is First Chapter Friday. It being February and Black History Month, I thought I'd read you the first chapter of Hidden Figures, Young Readers Edition uh, by Margot Lee Shetterly. It's really inspiring. The first chapter is called Chapter One, Setting the Scene. Dorothy Vaughn, Mary Jackson, Katherine Johnson, and Christine Darden loved math. As children, they showed special skills in arithmetic, and they went on to study mathematics in college. After graduation, they worked as teachers before going to work as computers, or mathematicians, for the government's air and space program. Over the years, hundreds of women have worked as mathematicians for the federal agency called the NACA the National Advisory Council for Aeronautics, which re researched and promoted the study of flight. But these women were among many who distinguished themselves with their talents and hard work. Dorothy Vaughn was a pioneer. She joined the NACA in 1943, the first year the agency began hiring African-American women as computers. And she was the first to be promoted into a management position. She was a role model for other women, and she helped to steer the careers of many talented women who were uh, joining the NACA. Mary Jackson was the first African-American woman to move up the ranks and become an engineer at the NACA. She was a fighter, standing up for herself and for other women who deserved the chance to prove themselves. Her work helped to make supersonic air flight fly higher and faster. Katherine Johnson was an African-American woman who became an essential member of the team that put the first American in orbit around the Earth. She was a dreamer and an independent thinker who was unafraid to imagine what others considered to be impossible. She helped to do the math that was required to send the first men into space and to bring them home safely. Christine Darden was an African-American woman who became one of the world's leading experts on supersonic flight. She became the face of the next generation of female space scientists. Her groundbreaking research on predicting sonic booms is still used today. The accomplishments of these women were remarkable, but their work was even more impressive because it was achieved while living and working in the South during a time when racial discrimination was commonplace and when most women with an interest in math were expected to become math teachers. A different time. In the 1800s after the Civil War, the government passed laws that ended slavery and granted full citizenship and voting rights to African Americans. Later, however, many state and local governments passed other laws uh, that legalized racial segregation. These regulations, which were most common in the South, kept black people and white people apart in many situations. They could not eat in the same restaurants. They could not drink from the same water fountains. They could not use the same restrooms. They could not attend the same schools. They could not ride the same parts of buses. They could not live in the same neighborhoods. They could not receive care in the same hospitals. They could not visit the same beaches. They could not compete on the same sports teams. They could not sit at the same sections in movie theaters. They could not marry someone of a different race. They could not even be buried in the same cemeteries. Technically, African Americans had the right to vote. However, many local laws made it almost impossible for them to do so. Some communities levied or charged poll taxes or enforced literacy requirements uh, for black people to register and vote. And since people who were not registered to vote weren't allowed to serve on juries or run for political office, many African Americans were deprived of these civil rights as well. During the 1930s, the United States uh, experienced the Great Depression, a decade-long period of economic struggle. Jobs became difficult to find and wages decreased dramatically. All Americans suffered, but African Americans 
face the most serious challenges in finding work. For many African Americans, World War II was an opportunity to make a better life for themselves and their families. Black men enlisted in the military in large numbers. Even though they served in separate black infantry regiments, usually overseen by white officers, uh, they believed that their loyalty and patriotism would help blacks to earn rights uh, that white citizens had. Women also enlisted in the army, where they were called WACs, W-A-C-S, that was for a women's uh, army corps. And they served in all female units in the Navy too. And for women like Dorothy Vaughn, Mary Jackson, Katherine Johnson, and Christine Darden, World War II opened the door to a career as a professional mathematician. Each of them found their way to the Langley Laboratory where they met one another. And women like them, they were smart, brave, confident, and good at math. The war was changing the world and it would change their lives as well. And that's the first chapter of Hidden Figures. Young, young Readers Edition. Thank you for listening. I hope to see you soon. Bye.